A number of students in the class mentioned that they didn't know how a home heating system worked. So this is a brief tutorial to talk about how a typical New England home heating system might work. It starts with item six, which is the thermostat. When the temperature in your house drops below a set point, often 65 to 68 Fahrenheit or 20 degrees C, it closes a contact, electrical switch closes, and this turns on the boiler. And the boiler is a source of heat. It can be fueled by oil, propane, natural gas, um, and <clears throat> similar to, to what we've done in lab. And this heat is shown by these arrows uh, labeled as two. The heat heats up hot water, and when the water inside the boiler reaches a certain temperature, uh, the circulator pump three turns on. And the, the purpose of the circulator pump is to push water through the house. So these red lines illustrate hot water moving through the house. And each of these sort of uh, squiggly red lines represents a radiator. So your house needs heat. The thermostat says I'm cold. The cold thermostat turns on the boiler. The boiler heats up the water. Circulating pump pumps the hot water through the radiators where it transfers that heat to the house. Cool water goes back down to the boiler where it is reheated. When the temperature of the room gets to the set point, the whole system shuts off. If we take a little bit of a closer look at the basement, we have a boiler, and this can be the EK1 uh, oil burner that we saw. We can also fuel that with uh, propane or natural gas, or this could be a condensing gas boiler as well. It is often the case that a hot water system is tied into the boiler, and in that case, instead of the all of the hot water going to a radiator in the house, some of the hot water will go to a radiator right down here in the bottom of the hot water tank. And so the tank's filled up with potable water. There's a radiator in the bottom that heats that water. And now the whole hot water tank is warm. And it's usually a super insulated tank. It loses only about a half a degree per hour. So that once you get the tank warm, it's waiting for you to take your shower in the morning. We'd look a little bit of a look at a little bit of an old school system. This is what we used to have in a lot of our houses. We used to have steam heat and steam heat operates pretty much the same way. The thermostat comes on, says I need some heat, except instead of heating hot water, we're actually heating water to the point where it produces steam. The advantage of the steam system is it didn't need a circulating pump. The steam would rise through the steam pipes up to the radiators where it would condense and then the condensate would return back down into the boiler by gravity. So these systems were simpler because all they needed was a burner and they didn't need any mechanical circulating systems. Finally, in a modern house, we don't typically have one zone, we have multiple zones, and this allows us to heat each room to a different temperature. And this allows us to maximize our efficiency in the home by not wasting heat in rooms where we are not living. And so again, we have our boiler, we have our hot water maker right here, and that is on what's called a zone. And then we also have other zones. This is zone one, zone two, zone three, and each of these are controlled by a zone valve, and the zone valve is controlled by its own thermostat. So instead of the thermostat turning on the boiler, the thermostat turns on the zone valve, and then the zone valve turns on the boiler. And in this illustration, we also have radiant floor heating, which is basically a, th a radiator uh, located below the floor of a room. Finally, uh, we've talked about condensing gas boilers. Here's an example of a condensing gas boiler. And in that case, our gas heat heats water, um, and then the return water is cool enough that it actually condenses the hot water vapor produced by the combust combustion process to uh, liquid water. And that's how we get the uh, full maximum uh, gross heating potential out of our fuel. So you'll notice that the, uh, uh, 
hot water goes, it circulates this way. Okay, so the cooling gases come in contact with the cool water. And as Jeff Pellerin would say, it wrings the water out of those stack gases, condenses the water, and allows us to extract maximum amounts of heat. 